What a funny country to see Nigerians debating over the attire that was worn by the Air Peace crew members. Nigerians, this is funny. So many people have attached ethnicity to it. You need to see what is happening on the social media. Let me allow you to take this snippet. I miss the celebration. Some Nigerians on social media have questioned the incorporation of a traditional Igbo attire, Ishiago, worn by the airline's cabin crew. Some critics voice concern over ethnic identity and tribalism. Others argue that as a privately owned business, Airpiece has the prerogative to represent its cultural roots. <laughs> So guys, it is so funny to see Nigerians talking about this thing. What does it mean that Airpiece decided to use this attire that looks so gorgeous, Nigerians? Well, I'm going to allow you to watch this video in detail. Don't forget that Erufai is now on fire. The governor of Kaduna State is dragging Erufai over the burden of death he left upon him, you know, while leaving office. Nigerians, this is the air of I want to become president too. He wants to become president at all costs. Don't forget that he has dumped Tinubu. He has dumped the APC. He has joined the SDP looking for a way to become, you know, a presidential candidate because they know that with INEC, they can win. With INEC, they can manipulate. They can sell by votes. They can do anything. Nigerians, you need to watch what is in this video. Just take your time, relax, take a cup of coffee and watch this video. Watch this video to the end. With the story of the moment, Nigeria's indigenous airline, Air Peace, which commenced London operations on March 30th, 2024. Many Nigerians across the globe have shown excitement over the airline's bold move in challenging the dominance of foreign carriers in the market. However, amidst the celebration, some Nigerians on social media have questioned the incorporation of a traditional Igbo attire, Ishiago, won by the airline's cabin crew. Some critics voice concern over ethnic identity and tribalism. Others argue that as a privately owned business, Airpiece has the prerogative to represent its cultural roots. <laughs> Well, all right. I have a tweet by Rano Mercury, which will come up in a bit. But, you know, I mean, I think he did say something about uh, the airline incorporating this traditional attire, which has been there for years, I believe, yeah. since inception. They've yeah. been using this Isiago outfit. But let me just read it. Rano wrote, may God bless Alan Onyama of Airpeace. And whoever came up with a beautiful idea of using Ishiagu to design Airpiece flight attendance uniform. I have flown on multiple airlines, and I know that airlines use the cultural outfit of their countries of origin as the air host and hostesses outfits. There is nothing wrong with it. Ethiopian airlines will not only clothe their stunningly beautiful air hostesses in Habisha chemists, they will even speak to you via their public address system first in Amharic before talking to you in English. Please be aware that there are over 70 ethnic groups with their own languages in Ethiopia. They cannot speak all. They choose Amharic. I flew with these air hostesses in the attached photo and you can see that their headgear is unique. It reflects their country of origin. Not only do I support Airpiece's Ishiago uniform and pray for their success of the airline, but I also appeal to all my followers to patronize Airpiece in the spirit of Grow Naira by Niger, except they do not fly your route. I mean, I actually like that tweet, and you know that Reno Mokuri has always been pushing for Grow Nigeria. But I think Rufai, you did respond to that tweet. And I'll read no, Rufai's I tweet. I, mean, I don't know if it's that tweet, but to, the, to the backlash, yeah, not to that tweet, to the backlash, right? <laughs> Airpiece is flying to London as a national thing of pride. But Nigerians are talking about clothes. Why do some Nigerians hate Nigeria? Why do we always like to pull each other down? And I know that you were discussing this before I so, walked into yeah, the, yeah. the uh, studio. And, you know, it's been trending on social and, media. And but go like, ahead. And I'd like to clarify a lot yes. of things. I think, see, whatever happened in the 60s between 
Saldana, Awolowo, and Zeke, please, we need to heal from all those things. Whatever happened with Lancaster House talk, which I know was a very big turning point with the start of the problems and people being bored, we need to be able to heal. Whatever happened also in the civil war, we need to be able to heal. This ethnic bigotry is too much. It will divide. It's dividing us already. Right. And that's why we can't collectively speak as one. What is wrong with wearing a siagu? Oh, but these same bigots did not speak when they served Kilishi and Zubu on that flight. Really? Is this what we've become now? A man has gone ahead to make Nigeria proud. The attire is from Nigeria. We ought to be celebrating that. That's putting more money to our local manufacturing sector. The next thing, people are saying, why must it be Isiago? Because they have their own ethnic ladies. Must we always think like this? And I'm sorry for this country because, see, a lot of people will say these are just banters on Twitter, but you'll be shocked how tribalistic most of the elite class in this country are. Yeah. And for those in the elite class that are tribalistic, please watch yourself. It is time for you to heal those wounds. We will never continue this way. We can never get anything out of our life this way. Somebody prominently, Dr. Newton Gibodo, a very close friend, dear to me, like a father to me, gave me a, a, a culture. The material that is, yeah, that is indigenous yeah. to, you know, Delta Ibo yeah. area and everything. Right. And I wear that material with a lot of pride. Right. Right. So it doesn't matter where you are from. I cannot be tribalistic. My half sister is a Shekiri. I wear, I tie George, I tie uh, in, in, in Rome. The truth is, let us look beyond all of this and celebrate the episode. But because you see, Dr. Bati, you were saying something yesterday that, oh, as he see most of these civil servants, as he tried to talk to them and everything, You'll be shocked that all the things Mr. Alan Oema is facing that he had not said yesterday might just be because of tribal bigotry and people will say, hey, why is he doing right. all of this? That's and we do that right. over our own people. We even use foreigners to favor our own people. We need to stop. We need to heal. How long are we going to continue? The last election, see how polarized. We, we split Lagos along tribal lines. We did everything. When are we going to heal? Well, let me take some of the backlash so that you can really understand. This is from uh, Vala who wrote... Mr. Onyema, why? Let this be a one-off, please. We're all very happy at this milestone as a country, but let's just make this a thing. That is the Ishiago outfit. Then another person responds saying, man tries to garnish his business with African style. You're still complaining. Go and start up your own airline and tell them what to do. I mean, I did pick um, Reno's tweet because he posted, if we can pull up those pictures, he posted, you know, a picture uh, with other, uh, you know, air hostesses wearing their country's traditional outfit. And, uh, you know, we, we have images of, you know, other airlines that are, you know, uh, like, there you have it. Yeah. We have Emirates, we have yeah. Ethiopian Airlines, we have all of these air hostesses adorning their country's attire, and I don't understand why it should be a thing. Well, Dr. I, I, I think it's much ado about nothing. Yeah. You know, just his thumb in a teacup. I mean, I, I've seen that uh, uh, attire before. Yes. That uh, uniform worn by the crew, and it's beautiful. Yeah. It's pleasant to the eye. And I think the aesthetics of it is what is more important. Yes. So there's no ethnicity involved in uh, air travel in terms of, you know, the way some people are talking about, oh, and because it is Isiago. Okay, if uh, tomorrow uh, Airpiece decides to change its uniform, they can even use, uh, they can use Ashoki. They can use uh, whatever from any part of Nigeria. Mr. Yema was uh, on this program yesterday. He made it clear that, look, Airpiece is a Nigerian brand. It's Nigerian. And it's promoting Nigerian. When you go to the counter to buy tickets, nobody asks you, are you Igbo, are you Yoruba, or are you uh, Aousa or Fulani? You know, it's a, it's a national brand providing service. And to the extent that, you know, that airline is also promoting our culture, food, uh, attire, you know, we shouldn't reduce it to village. Uh, too many people are so village. provincial. You know, in this country, even people in high places, yeah. extremely provincial. And uh, you have taken this story from the Twitter. You know, a lot of ignorant people, you know, who go on Twitter to go and say all kinds of things. Perhaps because uh, Elon Musk says uh, under his watch, X is a place where you can be free to just say what you say, what you like. Now, it's for people to be discerning. Yeah. Once you see somebody saying some nonsense that 
even a kindergarten will not come up with. You know, why? we shouldn't uh, yeah. you know, uh, 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 confer seriousness it's, on, on yeah. uh, absolute uh, ignorance oh. and idiocy, yes. you know, that some people exhibit yeah. just because they have one miserable phone and uh, they have uh, the, the 1,000 other credit on their phones. <laughs> but it's also very important to educate the public and to yeah. have them understand yeah. that, yeah, that, yeah, I think yeah. it is so important to have them understand that Nigeria is one. We are one. And he is, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say something that I, li I listened to Claire Kamanzi, yeah. who was the CEO of the Rwandan Development Board. And I'm saying this because part of the development was also Rwanda Air and how they were able to make such strides in such a short time. The first thing she said they had to do was the courage to heal and that's to forgive. And I had to come back to what Bufai had said in terms of the fact that we don't actually understand the effect of the historical antecedents of the division along right. ethnic lines for Nigerians and the fact that a lot of people react from this place. And also that the political elite or the elite class also use this as a weapon when it favors them. And so it is quite sad to say that when we're celebrating the achievements, when we should say this is our own, he is first of all Nigerian before anything else. And the fact that we are able to showcase our national attire, right. our pride, our culture, that should be what we should be celebrating. And right. I'm glad that as many people as possible are coming out to condemn. And every single one of us have a responsibility to speak against such vitriol and to condemn speeches or comments like this that are along ethnic lines. We have to fight for the soul of this nation and the unity of this nation and stop looking at things you know, first of all you see first of all oh, it's, they should wear they should have tight gilly on top of it so that it will satisfy every, then hold um, a stick just to show that it's, then the other minority groups you say oh you do not represent us let us wear our contra so I think it's very important that we first of all celebrate and not let that destroy. yesterday when it was here I was going to ask him how he felt about it, but I thought, no. How he Let's felt about, about the, the, you know, all the negativity around the out outfits. But I thought it was too minor compared I, I to the... I thought it was quite strange. Yeah, yeah, but compared to the, to the, to the strides, to the yeah. achievements, let's not distract. And I want to focus on the fact that there are more people celebrating the fact that Nigerians are putting Nigeria on the global map and doing it excellently. That's what we should celebrate. Well said, Ayo. Well said. Well, congratulations, Air Peace. We'll take another story. Over the weekend... The Kaduna State Governor, Uba Sani, decried the huge debt he inherited from his predecessor, Nasiru El Rufai, when he assumed office on May 29, 2023, declaring that the state is now left with little money and not enough to pay salaries, attracting a wave of criticism from Bashir El Rufai, son of the ex-governor. Uba Sani made the comment while addressing a town hall meeting in Kaduna, adding that despite the huge debt, totaling $587 million, including 85 billion naira and a separate 115 billion naira in contract liabilities from the ex-governor. He has not borrowed any loan in the last nine months of his government. Well, let's take a listen before we come back for a discussion. Despite the huge body of about $587 million, 85 billion naira, and 115 contractual liability sadly inherited from the previous administration will remain resolved in steering Kaduna State towards progress, sustainable development. We have conducted a thorough assessment of our situation and are sharpening our focus accordingly. It gladdens my heart to inform you that despite the huge inherited debt on the state, till date, we have not borrowed a single couple. Well, all right, let's take Bashar al Rufai's tweet. He wrote, These guys have realized that they are wholly incompetent, and the only way to mask the nonsense is to deflect from a governor that is always sleeping in Abuja to a litany of incompetent aides that were only rewarded for foolish political reasons. One will think that from all the fact allocations, these unserious clowns Change to dollars. Debt will be the list of their problems. All right, this is Bashir El Rufai's tweet, and a lot of people have condemned that tweet. I mean, I don't even know who he's referring to at this point, the people that the governor, Ubasani, has appointed, because one of them, as you know, is Bello, who is, you know, in the House of uh, Reps. And I believe that Ubasani also have retained a lot of but people Uba from was instrumental mental to, to Bello. Exactly. The House of Reps. Ubasani said, where he, uh, Bello said, where his own father did not support him enough, Ubasani stepped in there and ensured he got there. That's right. what Bello Elrufai said. Right. Well, in any case, at the end of the day, the point is that 
Ubasani has said, I mean, we did know that he said that he's uh, received money from FAC allocations and that the, the state had gained more money from subsidy removal. So, I mean, the fact that he has not even borrowed money for nine months is kudos to his government. If we can also just pull up a tweet that was uh, trending, which is El Rufai's tweet, he had written back in 2012, amidst the debate over Kaduna's death profile, previous social media posts of El Rufai criticizing former president Good luck, Jonathan, over death, began circulating on social media. Well, in a 2012 post on X, Al Rufai criticized Jonathan for borrowing at the expense of the country's future. His tweet reads, There are two ways to conquer and enslave a nation. One is by the sword. The other is by death. $40 billion and counting. I mean, I don't know if you recall that tweet. I mean, it has been circulating on social media. Uh, Ayo, your take on this story, quickly. Well, I, mean, I don't want, know if I should excuse Bashir for being an over-enthusiastic son who is loyal to his father and without facts, um, trying to defend the honor of his father. So on that note, maybe I'll just let it slide. But uh -huh. one thing I must say is that usually when accusations come up like this, especially accusations that are verified, you go on the DMO website, you would see the debt of Kaduna State and it's 85 yeah. um, um, million um, naira, as he's mentioned. Billion, sorry. You, why do we respond with insults rather than responding to the fact? Why didn't he say that actually my dad did X, Y, Z, borrowed this amount of money and exactly. spent it on this instead? It's like saying that I say, Rufai, you a thief. You say your mouth is smelling. Mm -hmm. Are you a thief or are you not a thief? Mm -hmm. Did he borrow? Did he not borrow? Did he spend on contract? Did he award contracts that we cannot see or did he not? So I, I feel that it's actually shameful and a, an insult and a disgrace to his family name for him to come out like this and insult a man who's come out with facts and figures and the only response he has in, in defense of his father is to insult a man who is doing his best for the good of Kaduna State. Let me just mention that he said they get, they use 70% of FAC allocations each month to service debts in Kaduna Correct. State. So 10 right. billion naira is received. 7 billion naira is used, especially because of the dollar rate, is used to um, service debts. And there he is working hard to ensure that civil servants still get paid. And one young entitled man is there defending and saying that, no, I I think he's, I'll just excuse him for youthful exuberance. The uh, governor, Ubasani, was speaking at a town hall meeting, the state of Kaduna State, which is something that we keep talking about. Yes, right. There should be proper interaction, regular interaction between the governor and the people, all these governors, where they give account. In Lagos, we had uh, Governor Sonwulu the other day on television, you know, uh, Sonwulu speaks. So you, had, you have a similar thing in uh, Kaduna State. And it was... It was a town hall meeting, yes, last weekend, last Saturday. And it was on that occasion that the governor, you know, offered the people the state of the accounts and how he inherited so much money. He even, uh, so much debt, he even went ahead to say, he went to the president to say, please, come to Kaduna and help us. But uh, the president said, it is World Bank loan that you are referring to, the 587 million. But uh, in any case, whatever the federal government can do, the federal government will help you. The people deserve to know. However, this uh, uh, Bashir El Rufai came forward and described the governor as a clown, described the governor as incompetent. Uh, you say you will not, uh, you will not uh, comment on that. You let it slide because he's uh, <laughs> because he's because he's defending his uh, father. There's something called home training. <laughs> Some of uh, these overzealous uh, 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 children. Yes. Questions will be raised about home training. Absolutely about parenting. These are the kind of questions that, that should be raised. How old is the Bashir uh, Erufai referring to a man who is old enough to be his uh, father as a clown, as uh, incompetent, as a man who sleeps in Abuja? No, there, there, there should be. I, I, I expect that by now, all uh, his, uh, you know, of his parents should have uh, 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 reprimanded him, not to talk to the to constitute an authority in, in, in that uh, manner. I've never heard now, of this. Now, beyond that, it's good that the governor of the state has said. Look, he's not going to exchange words yes. with uh, Bashir El Rufai. The person who should come forward to defend the allegation oh. and to offer explanation is Nasir El Rufai oh, himself. Absolutely. He was a man in the saddle absolutely. and he has enough talent and enough intelligence to be able to speak up. Not for a boy who, who was not even part of the government Tiny to man. be abusing people, you know. I mean, the governor was not even abusing his father. Yes. Nobody was abusing his father. He was just reporting to the people, this is how we made the treasure. And it's good that he even reported because Sarah right now is asking all the governors. Gov gov Very true. So the, the, the governor has not, has not done anything no, out of place. Uh, if the governor goes ahead now and he institutes a probe yes. and he summons uh, his predecessor to come and explain, we we'll say it's witch hunting. Right.
But right. incidentally, the people of uh, Kaduna State, they have not expressed outrage right. over this. And that's uh, the question. And that was why I was telling uh, Achike Chude that Nigerians have reached a point where they are very comfortable, you know, uh, with uh, the state of affairs, either in Kaduna State or elsewhere. Right. I want to take my final story, but I know so, I will find yeah, have another of... view to it, too. <laughs> I'm a very violent, our woolen person. <laughs> you know, when we tell you that politicians, you don't put mouth in their matter, this was the same Mubasani that kept on saying, well, Rufa is the best to slice bread. I'm not saying he shouldn't talk about the fact that the state owes debt, which, yeah. is, a, which is something he should talk about because it's affecting him. But this was the same El Rufa that endorsed Mubasani, and Mubasani got in there. So now they've been able to open each other's affairs to the public, and that's why they're having their brick bats. So you see, when these people fight, don't put their mouth on the guns, don't die in their war. Well, but, I don't think anybody is fighting with anybody. It's just this young man. No, and so that's but, home co concerning the lack of home training, yeah, that's the main Doctor, but I want to, I, I want to tell you, a Yoruba ad, right. you finish it. Right. The Yoruba have a saying right. that Ileton Toro, a house that is no, 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 but I'm not saying that, but, but, but you know, because, but, because every, for every house, there, you know, there are children that have different variations, right? Yeah. Belo El Rufai had certainly past thanked um, Ubasoni for what he has done, but I don't think El Rufai's child should come out that way. I right. say that. Right. Today. So, guys, you have seen it for yourself. Honestly, Nigeria needs to heal itself from all this ethnicity. Tinubu Waka come out from nowhere and said, Emilokon, it is my turn. Now you can see where the country is heading to. Because somebody feels the Yorubas, it is their turn. And he's taking Nigeria backward. I tell you, this ethnicity problem is in the gene. It's in the blood of people. It will really take time. It will take a whole lot of work to get rid of it. So for me, I keep telling Nigerians, we are better together. We are better. We are, we, when we are together, we are stronger. We are better together. So guys, you have seen it for yourself. I don't know what you make of all this in the video from the ethnic at attire that people are talking about. Isiago attaching it, ethnicity to it, to the burden of death by Erufai. Erufai that will open mouth and will say all kinds of things. You can imagine the state that he left Kaduna in before leaving office. And he will come and tell us he's doing amazing well. So guys, just drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Turn on the notification bell. Please give this video a like so that YouTube can recommend it to others. And drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you.